Today we are going to take a look at creating a simple GL integration in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2015 and Integration Manager. My name is Diane Jones and I am a manager on the support team for our Dynamics GP practice. I have been using Microsoft Dynamics for over 15 years, helping clients get the most of their Dynamics system. My goal is to assist clients such as they become well informed and confident in using the many features of their dynamic system. Let me take a moment to introduce you to our team. The Business Advantage support team at Rand Group provides post deployment support for Microsoft Dynamics GP. We help clients increase revenue and lower ongoing costs by reducing inefficient processes through more effective use of the software you already own. We help with things like software updates, custom integrations, as well as provide technical support and customized training for our client staff. Our upfront methodology helps people use technology for business success. So what is Integration Manager? Widely used during the implementation phase to bring in beginning balances, Integration Manager or IM has far-reaching benefits once your system is up and running. Frequently, we need to bring in entries that may not originate from Dynamics GP, but for example, may be sent to us by our payroll provider. These entries can require a great deal of data entry time, keying in large amounts of data, which generally increases the risk of errors. Dynamic GP's Integration Manager provides a safe and easy way of integrating data between business applications. IM is native automation. It will reduce time and the risk of errors. Examples include the upload of recurring journal entries, journal entries originating from outside sources, or beginning balances related to a new acquisition. Data is validated through the integration process, identical to a user keying in the data. IM supports both multi-currency and intercompany transactions. While the new feature, Copy and Paste from Excel, is very beneficial to our current users, that, that functionality does not extend to intercompany transactions. IM supports integrations from a variety of sources and formats. I can import from Excel, a CSV file, or a database. And I can import to my Microsoft Dynamics GP database, other databases, or other applications. You might be saying to yourself, this sounds like a good idea and I could use this, but how do we get started? We're going to walk through the steps and provide some pointers and tips to ensure a successful experience with Integration Manager. The only data we need to get started is your source file with the required information for creating a journal entry in Dynamics GP. Source files generally begin as an Excel file that can be saved as Excel, CSV, or Tab Delimited. Excel files in Integration Manager require the use of named ranges, so if the file structure changes from month to month, you might want to consider using CSV or text. Some good practices to follow include creating a shared location for the integration files. If more than one user will be using the integration, you all must have access to that source file location. Consider having the original source file saved for reference and just save over the IAM source file name. This will eliminate changes each time you run the integration. Ensure that all the fields you need for your integration are included in the file every time and are in the same column order. Above are some of the steps that we're going to walk through in just a moment to create an integration in Dynamics GP. We'll discuss best practices for setting up an integration as highlighted above. First, we're going to create a unique name for the integration. You'll select your destination and edit mode. This includes insert, insert and update, or update only. You'll set the number of warnings and errors that you will want in your integration. Warnings are messages that will allow the transaction to come into GP, but will cause you an issue. For a GL integration, the most common warning is that the transaction is unbalanced or does not net to zero. Errors will result in the transaction failing and must be corrected. The most common error in a GL integration is that the account does not exist. We'll review the location for log files for error reporting. Then we'll set up our source queries. As a general rule, at least one source query is set up per destination table. We'll discuss using filters, sorting, and scripts. We'll then set the destination in GP, which in our case will be a general journal. We'll establish relationships between the queries that you have created. 
In the destination mapping window, every folder in this window could be a separate source query. This all depends upon the complexity of the integration. Keep in mind that the source file you use as your source should be the correct one. If you are mapping to the batch ID, this should come from your source header query. If you are mapping to account numbers, this should come from your source detail query. This will become very clear to you in just a moment. Review the field rules and options, as well as the options to use translations, case conversion, leading and trailing spaces, as well as defaults if a field is left blank. After execution, the progress window will give you the statistics on the number of transactions that were queried, attempted, successfully integrated, or failed. You can view the log report from the progress window to get specifics on any failures. You can also try keying in the data directly into GP from your source file to see if the problem is with the source file or the integration settings. You can change your settings in the im.ini file to determine where the integration may be failing. You can set show dynamics equal to true and do UI redraw equal to true as well. I have show dynamics equal to true set on my application. So we're going to be using Dynamics GP for our destination company and integration manager. I have GP open as well as integration manager. GP must be open in order to run an integration and you must have all windows closed. I'm also going to talk a little bit about our source file. My source file is an Excel file that I have saved as a TXT file, and you'll see how it converts into Integration Manager in just a moment. So we're going to select New Integration. I'm going to call this JE New. I'm not going to use a description. I find this is useful for when I am sharing an integration with other people to give them an idea of what the purpose of the integration is. My destination edit mode is insert only. The maximum number of error defaults to 10, but I'm going to change it to 1 because I like to troubleshoot my errors early in the process. I'll leave the maximum number of warnings at 10. The scripts tab shows the integration points of when I can insert a SQL script to affect the integration itself, and we'll talk more about this in just a moment. The logs tab gives me a, a, cap, a recap of what's happening in terms of failures and successes. I'm going to hit the apply button and say OK. So we've created our integration name and we'll move on to creating our sources. I'm going to select the sources folder, right click, say add source. We're going to do a text source, define new torque text, and I'm going to call this JE header. I'm going to browse out to my file, say open. We'll change the delimiter to tab. First row must contain, contains column names. We'll then go to the columns tab and refresh our columns. This will ensure that it's looking at the right file. Now because this is my header query, I'm only concerned about seeing the batch ID and the date on the transaction. So I'm going to deselect the other fields. If I don't deselect them, I get a message from Integration Manager saying that, that they are set to be shown but that I'm not putting into my group by, so this eliminates that warning. On the filter tab, I have a blank row in my file which will create an error in, in Integration Manager. So I'm going to pull in a column, I'm going to say the batch ID is not like, select list possible values which populates the table with all the values in that field and I'm going to hit the space bar and say add into criteria. So this will filter out any blank rows, which is very common in Excel files to get converted for Integration Manager. On the Sorting tab, I want to group by Batch ID and Date. The Scripts tab on the Query folder is much like that on the integration itself. If I highlight Before Query and select Open, go up to Script, Script Library. There's a built-in script library that has a lot of commonly used scripts that are useful in integrations. We're not going to use a script today, and we'll talk about this in another session. I'll say Apply, OK, and we have one source query created. We'll go back up to Sources, and we're going to create our detail query, Add Source, Text, Define New Text. We're going to call this JE Details. We'll browse out to the same file. I'm using the same file for both queries in this integration. Tab, 
first row contains column names. We'll go to the Columns tab, refresh the columns, but we don't have to uncheck anything in this box because it's all applicable to the detailed query. I will put the filter to filter out the blank row in this query as well. It's best practice to keep everything the same between your queries. Hit the space bar, add into criteria. No sorting is necessary, and again, we're not using scripts, and we'll say apply. Once I say OK, the system will give me a message saying that we need to set relationships between the two queries. We'll say OK, highlight query relationships, select relationships on the toolbar. I'll open these up a little bit so you can see all the fields. And we're going to join batch ID and date by just dragging the fields across. Now we're going to set a destination. We'll say Add Destination. We'll select Microsoft Dynamics GP, Financial, General Journal, Open. Now we're going to head into the destination mapping, which is the key to a successful integration. We'll double click, and I'll expand the window so that you can see all of the areas of this window. The General Journal equates to the header of the transaction. So we'll start here, and we'll walk our way down these fields, mapping it to our file. Now the journal entry field, I want to come from the system, so we'll leave that set to default. Intercompany, this is not an intercompany transaction, and the default on a journal entry is not to be intercompany, so we'll also leave that to be used default. The batch ID is in my source file, so when I click in the source, there's a lips button that opens, and I'll select that. I want to make sure I'm on my header query when I select batch ID. Transaction type, well the default transaction type is standard, but if I don't know that, I can select the field, go up to properties, select other information, and it will tell me what the values are. But again, we know that a standard transaction is the default, so we can leave our rule set to use default. The transaction date is in my file. I'll click on the ellipse button, again using my header source query, select date. I don't have a reversing date. My source document should be a default. My reference, I have a, a reference in my source file, but I don't want it in the header. I want to put something different. So I'm going to drop this box down, say use constant, and let's call this JE upload. So we're done with this window for now, but I'm going to save it and we'll look at a couple of other things before we move on. If I highlight the line for batch ID, you, you'll remember, I think I mentioned, that I have lowercase, com lowercase characters in my batch ID. I have two options for translating those. I can use a translation feature in Integration Manager, and you'll see there are my lowercase characters where I could just type in an uppercase the same words. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use a native conversion feature of changing it from no conversion to convert to uppercase. Also, while on the batch ID, I'm going to select the Options tab, and you'll see the default is that if the batch is not there, the document will be canceled. Well, I don't want that to happen. I want it to create the batch for me, so I'll change it to say Add New Batch. So I'll save it again, and then we'll move on to the Entries folder. This window corresponds to our detail or our lines of our journal entries. So again, we're not using an intercompany transaction, so we'll just leave this as the default. My account number is in my source file, so I'm going to browse out. I'm going to change my source query to my detail query, select account, and in my debit amount where it says use source field, I only have one column for debit and credits, so I'm going to change this to say use positive source field, and then we'll browse out and select the amount from my detail source query. We'll do the same thing on credit amount using set use negative source field, selecting the same amount column. Distribution reference, we'll map this to our source file because we do have a reference out here. And then we're going to hit save. I'm going to close the destination mapping window and we're going to select to run the integration. So we have an error. Most of the errors in Integration Manager are fairly self-explanatory. This says must provide source field value for use source field rule on field entries account number. So it's telling me that this is in my destination mapping where I have mapped to, I have said to use my source file, but I didn't put anything on account number. 
So let's go back into destination mapping. Let's go to the entries folder and there's nothing mapped here and this is what it's looking for. So we're going to go back out, we're going to change it to our details and pull our account in. Something else to know uh, now that we've come back into this window is that you always want to look at the options tab and make sure that the source record set that it's pulling from is the correct query. So let's close the destination mapping window, select save, and let's run it again. Once the integration is done, that progress window will come up and will tell you what the success rate of your integration was. So the integration saw four documents, attempted four, and four came in successfully. So we're going to close this window. We'll go over to the financial page, go to our batches. Let's do a lookup and let's select monthly JEs. We have four transactions. So we'll close this and I'd like to run this integration a little bit differently for you just to show you some of the flexibility we also have. So if you'll remember on the JE header source detail query, I had another column, the transaction number, which this was just a reference number for me. And the reason this was in my file is I had two journal entries that had the same date. Well, I've decided that I don't want them to come in as one journal entry, but I'd like to have them separated out. So I'm going to display to show that column and I'm going to go back to my sorting and I'm also going to group by transaction number. I'll select, select apply and say OK. And now when I right click and preview my JE header, I have five transactions and you can see two of them are the same date. So now we're going to go into the query relationships and we're going to add that relationship here so we'll join on transaction number as well. That's the only changes I really need to make on this integration because I've added another column. And one thing I will add that is if you do need to change your file at any point during the time you're using your integration, always add your columns at the end because it's much easier to change your mapping. But let's go back to destination mapping because I want to change the batch ID to something else. Instead of using the source field, I would like to put an input field. An input field is a prompt that will come up when we start running this integration so that we can put a different ID for our batch ID. So I'm going to select run. Here's the prompt. It says please enter a value for the field batch ID. So let's just call this, let's call this new batch 2. I'll say OK. And you'll see the windows flashing in the background. That's because I have my uh, decks, my im.ini set to show the interface so that I can also troubleshoot integrations. Here's our progress window. We have five queried, five attempted, and five are successful. We'll go back over to our batches. We'll do a lookup and we'll find our new batch two. And as you can see, we have five transactions. So we're going to close integration manager and I'll say yes to save the integration. And that's how you use Integration Manager for setting up a GL integration to streamline operations and reduce your ongoing cost. I hope you enjoyed our training session today. If you would like personalized assistance with myself or any of our experienced consultants, one-on-one -on -one or team support is available for all of Rand Group's Business Advantage support clients. When considering a new Microsoft partner to work with, you might ask yourself, why Rand Group? A couple of things you should consider. We originated in 1996 as part of Heinen Associates CPAs. We have over 100 local professionals to serve our clients. We have a 90% client retention rate and offices in both Houston and Dallas, Texas. We are also in the top 1% of Microsoft partners worldwide. I hope you've enjoyed the training session and I look forward to working with you soon. Please email us at info at randgroup.com to schedule a private consult consultation or call us at 1-866-714-865 to connect with our support team right now. Thank you.